Hello everyone and welcome back to Whiskey Wednesday. Uh, today, a uh, whiskey that I, can't, I don't think we've ever reviewed on the show before, maybe not even a brand. Um, but today we're talking about Glen Caddam and their rather wonderful 10 year old offering. Uh, 46% unchilled filtered, no additional colouring. There's not a huge story to tell you about Glen Caddam. They're an Eastern Highlands distillery and they produce about 1.3 million litres of whiskey a year. In the year 2000, the distillery was mothballed, and then in 2003, it was sold to Angus Dundee Distillers, previously being owned by brands like Heron Walker in the 1950s and Allied Domek up until about sort of the 2000s-ish. So, not tons of history, um, but a whiskey brand for me, which um, I don't see that much of, you don't hear it shouted about, you don't hear it really talked about a lot, but from what I can gather from reviews and things, people really like it. So as a 10 year old, I couldn't find much about the cask information, let's move this glass, uh, but as you can see from the color, it is very, very light indeed. I would be not surprised if there was some sherry cask in it, but from nosing this last night and tasting it briefly, um, I would assume it is 100% American oak, be that first fill, refill, whatever. <coughs> Excuse me, I feel like my phone's gonna fall, so I'll just move that from there. And let's smell, taste, and see what's going on with Glen Caddam 10. A continuing note that I got from last night is that it really reminds me of Glen Morangy 10. It has that big pineapple-y kind of melon note to it. But the dominant flavor, and something I don't think I've ever smelt in whiskey before, especially not even bourbon, um, is this smell of like whipped cream. Like this kind of, not vanilla infused or anything like that, but like you, know, you, get the, you get the can, you shake it, you put it on top of something, that just that initial aroma of whipped cream. And underneath that, as we've already said, pineapple, melon. There's some straw notes to it. It's a little bit hay-like. Um, in all honesty, if you'd pulled me to this blind, I probably said it was something like a daff mill. It has a lot of daff mill quality to it. And is an older distillery. But yeah, fresh fruit, whipped cream. There's no peat in it at all. There's no sort of off spicy notes. Just this very delicate, light, clean, fresh kind of whiskey. Oh, price as well. I think I paid 40 quid for this bottle, so not a lot of money either. Let's taste it. Hmm. First whiskey of the day. Still before midday as well when I'm filming this. Comes across as a little bit dry at the start. It might just be the intensity of the alcohol and my lack of sort of palate adjustment this morning. All the notes from the nose continue onto the palate. We've got these beautiful kind of creamy, like tinned fruit notes. Again, there's pineapple, the melon things there. It's not citrusy at all. It is more of these exotic fruits. Towards the back there, there's even like a slight tartness to the finish, which reminds me a little bit of raspberry. Mm. Also too, in the, in the, sort of in the palate section, there's some very nice Bao Blair notes to this. Um, or notes that I associate with Bao Blair more than any other brand, and those notes are those slightly greener highland notes, things that kind of could be herbaceous, they could be like kind of underripe fruit, they could just be wood notes as well. But that is quite a nice contrast to the, the textural influence of these creamy exotic fruit notes. Finish is really good, it's very, very decent. It is slightly drying, even on the second sip. I 
do get some slightly more youthful notes with this, but it is just a 10 year old, so let's not hold that against it anyway. <coughs> all in all, uh, this year so far for me and Whiskey Wednesday has been a year of what haven't I tried, or what haven't we talked about for a long time. Uh, Glengarry, uh, Tour of Vague was a massive surprise this year. Uh, the Loch Lomond 14 was great, Toba Mori 12 was great. This also fits into this list. And I've only ever seen a couple of independent Glen Caddams, and even they, having tasted them, were, were pretty pretty different. Uh, one of them was the, one of the driest whiskies I've ever tried, and the other one was just this really sort of soft, easy style, fitting more in with this. But this is very, very good. Um, I would give this like a solid 8 out of 10. This is a delicious whisky. It does not break the bank. Um, I think the cheapest I saw this was about £37, which is kind of a steal for what this is. Um, it's not the biggest flavour, it's not going to blow you away, but if you just want an easy drinking style, and bar means if you are a Lowland fan, if you like Daff Mill, if you like Rosebank, if you like St Magdalen, this really is a place to look, because um, this does it for literally 75% cheaper. Sometimes even more, especially when it comes to Rosebank and St. Magdalene. Uh, but yeah, overall, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. It is a really, really good quality single malt, and it is something that you should probably look out for. Uh, but thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next week. Cheers.